welcome to the multi-page um, section of our of our presentation today. Um, multi-page and dash can be um, carried out uh, or built in two different ways. This link, which I'll share next to uh, the video, is uh, the main documentation about multi-page apps. And you'll see that it's divided into two sections, dash pages, remember this feature, because this is what we're going to use, and dash multi-page multi apps without pages. Multi-page apps without pages was the older version, the older way, the previous way of building a multi-page um, dash app. Now we're at uh, dash 2.15, uh, I think. Uh, but if you use dash 2.5 or uh, or earlier, um, you could use, the, even now you can use the old way if you want. Um, and what was, how we did it in the old way, um, it, I want to go over it in one or two minutes because the, the this previous way is what works with Wasm Dash. If you want to build a Dash app on Wasm Dash, not on your computer locally, not on PyCharm, you can build a multi-page app, but only if you use the older version, multi-page apps without pages, right? Um, and so the way to do it, we'll look at the simple example, is just just a more code than we're used to today. So we would def we would import our libraries like always, instantiate dash, and then build out the layout. In the layout, we will have to add this DCC location and with ID and refresh, and we will have to add um, our our DCC uh, links. Uh, in this case, to to show the links or like the tabs or pages uh, on the page, and um, and reference the URL for those links, right? And then you will need a callback, and this callback is something that now nowadays we don't need for a multi-page app. This callback, you would say. Uh, go into the path name of this URL of the DCC location. So always listen to the path name of the DCC location. Um, and if, uh, depending on what the, what path name uh, you're on, uh, display something, right? Uh, here's, here's another example of multiple pages, right? You have page one layout that you build, and then you have page two layout that you build. You have a callback inside the page one just to show maybe a different graph or just different things happening. You have another callback uh, tied to page two, but this section is a section you don't necessarily need anymore inside the new way of doing Dash apps that you can do locally on, on your computer. We'll just copy this just so you can see what it looks like. Copy into Wasm Dash and let's run it. And I think it should work, save and run. Now we have two pages, page one, and it has a callback with some drop downs and text. And then it has go to homepage. Then we can go to page two and a radio button and some things that change. So we have multi page. But again, it's using the older version where we have to declare this callback. We're listening to the path name of the URL, which is a DCC location. Where is a DCC location? An index page All right here. We're listening to that URL. And then we're saying if the path name equals, like if it's here on the top of the browser, if it equals page one, then return this layout. If it equals page two, then return this layout and so on and so on. So this is how you wanna do it if you're using Wasm Dash. If you wanna build your Dash page uh, um, locally on your computer or deploy it to the web, um, then we made it even easier, thanks to a lot of work from our community members using Dash pages. Um, I would highly recommend this method. Uh, because it removes a lot of the the necessity to write uh, the callback and tie and listen to the DCC location. So how you do this is probably easier to show with this uh, repo, right? This repo is one that Emma recreated. Again, a very active community member. And you can see she has different examples of multi-page apps. I'm just gonna go into the multi-page example one, the simplest example. And we'll see that we have an app.py file. Remember this structure, because this is how it's going to look like for all your multi-page apps using the new pages. We have an app.py file. 
that will be our main layout that will refer to right here you'll see inside the drop down it will refer to each and every page and then we build each and every page. We want a bar chart page, bar charts.py. We want a heat map page, heat maps.py, or whatever you want to call it. But here you see that we have four different pages. And bar chart, you see a regular page, a layout, a callback, and so on and so on. Now I'm going to show you on, um, on PyCharm what's important to keep in mind when you're building a multi-page app with pages. Here you have a multi-page app. This is the most important uh, part that you should read, pages and layout. There's many other parts here. Meta tasks, because pages is powerful. You can do a lot with it. You can you can add redirects. You can add uh, meta tags for like um, search engine optimization, uh, like a description part. This is read by, by Google. Um, you, can, you can have nested pages, pages inside pages. Um, uh, you can have multiple pages in one file. There's like so much you can do with uh, with uh, the new pages. But just to get started, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't um, try to build the best thing from the very beginning. Just build the basic thing, right? Just go here and see an example that we have on, on the docs. We're, I actually copied it in here, so it makes it a lot easier for you to see. Okay, this is the first example belonging to the pages chapter. So if you look at my uh, project here on the left, on the sidebar, you'll see my multi-page app. This is what I'm going to where I'm going to build my multi-page app. And like you saw in the repo, I have an app.py file, and then I have uh, the pages folder, which includes three different pages in my app. Now I'm going to run this, and you'll see here I have a home button. Well, let's call it tab or sidebar or whatever. You, we can make it more beautiful later. An analytics tab that will show me the content here, and then the archive tab. So let's, before before I show you this full layout and, and uh, how this, this works, let's just go into each page. Right? Let's go to the home page. And you see that when I change it to the home page, this is what I have, a title and a subtitle. And that is because if we go to the home page, home.py, pages, home.py, we'll see that that is all we have. We have a layout equals a title and a subtitle. That is it. Let's go to the archive page and see what we what, what we will expect to see in the browser. Archive.py, we'll see a title and another subtitle. This is our archive page and page content. Let's go back and see. Archive, perfect, title and subtitle. And let's go to our last page, analytics. Here is a bit more uh, fancy. Here we'll see a title a label, a radio items, like radio buttons that we saw we built in the previous uh, sessions, previous apps. And then and then some empty div, which we're going to fill with this callback. We're going to take the value of the, the value of this analytics input. So the value of the radio item, we're going to listen to what radio button was clicked. And then we're just going to return a string. You selected this radio button. You selected that radio button. This is returned to the children of this div. So remember, only a radio button and underneath uh, the text. Go to analytics, and here we go. Title, the label, a radio button, and then the text that is returned through the callback, right? So notice that this part of the page, oops, right here, all of this always looks the same. Only this part of the page right here differs and changes based on the link that we click on. So this is your this is really your page, right? This is what you want to present. You'll have here two dashboards, a, a dash age of grid, a data table. Uh, you'll have three different graphs, many callbacks, drop downs. Any it, on on each and every dash page, you can put whatever you want. Remember the complete app that we built with the examples of Dash and Twenty. This could be just one page. You put this whole app inside one of the I don't know archive page or the analytics page, right? And then you have to build your main, I guess your main page, which will, will be your main um, layout, this, this section right here. The, the, the area of the app that will showcase the links, right? How do people move from page to page? This will always be in your app.py file. Remember, you have content for each and every page, and then you have in the app.py, you will have the uh, the links that people can click to go to 
the different pages and anything else you want to uh, you want in there. You see how this title multi-page apps with dash pages? This is in the app.py file right here. So this is always going to be present. This is app.layout always going to be present in every single page because it's in the app.py file. No matter what we click on, this will always be present and all of these links will be present. So how do we do that? You'll see here, we have our title and then we have the div. And in the div, we say, this div is what is responsible to showcase the links. This uh, div is showcasing links. We're saying for each for each page in the page registry dot values and page registry. I'm not going to go too much into it, but it's every single page you see has this register page, register page, and register page. This is the page registry under the hood. So for each page in the page registry and their values, um, create a DCC link, create a DCC link with the name of the page, page name, and the um, the URL of the page, the href, right? Which is actually um, actually this, the name of the page home. Look look down below, I'm, I'm, hopefully you can see it, the black thing that comes down up below, 850, this is because it's uh, this home page. Analytics is forward slash analytics and archive is forward slash archive. And you can, I printed it out for you so it'll make, make it even easier to see. I just, this you don't need. I just printed it out so you can see. For every page inside the page registry, values, print out the name and print out the path. So you can see first is home and the path is forward, forward slash. And you can see here, home, path, forward slash. We declared this in every page. The second one is analytics, forward, forward slash analytics, archive, forward slash archive. We didn't declare it and we don't yet, we don't have to declare every the href in every page. Dash will automatically take the name of the page and use that as the path unless you choose to declare it. Okay, so this is the app.py file, right? Very simple structure, one app, and inside the folders page, um, uh, all the pages that you want uh, in your app. There is a couple of things I want you to make note of. Write these things down so you don't forget them, because if you always remember them, it will make your multi-page app creation a lot easier. So here are the couple of things you need to know. Um, when you are building your app.py file, always make sure to, to include this argument where you instantiate dash. Use pages equals true. By default, all the other apps that we created in the past, the single, uh, single page apps, this was false by default, right? We, that's why we never really saw it. We never really did anything. But we don't want this to be false. We want it to be, to, to be true. So we have to declare use pages equals true. In every single app.py file, you want, to, you want to reference your links. Now, this is a very basic way we did it, right? We just reference it like this. It doesn't look very good, but you'll see in multi-page apps fancier ways of doing this. You can use like the dash bootstrap, uh, um, I think it's called uh, tab or link. You can use a dropdown. Uh, in Mantine, uh, there's many different ways that you can you can show these links in a in a in a beautiful, stylish uh, way, like you see on real websites, right? This was just for example purposes. And then you have to add the dash dot page container because this is where the magic happens. This is the content. So every you see how the content is right here underneath the div, underneath these links. If I move this up, you'll see now it doesn't make a lot of sense. But you'll see now that the content is going to is going to be above the content of each page will be above the links. So let's go back and we'll see. Refresh. Analytics. And now you see the content is up here. You, this doesn't make sense, obviously, because usually the tabs or the links are going to be on the sidebar or on top. But I just moved it so you can see the difference. This is what you need to include in every single multi-page app um, to 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 tell the app where to share the content, where to how to show and where to show the con to display the content. This is for app.py file. As a summary, use pages, include links, and add the dash dot page container. Three things you need to do in every app.py file that you didn't do in single pages. There's another three things you need to remember and do in every single page in the full in the pages folder. Remember that the pages folder should be called pages folder, unless you want to go in there and customize it. You have to change a few things. 
Don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Always name this pages. And then remember three things inside each and every .py um, page. One, you have to include this at the very top. Dage, uh, dash, re, dot page, uh, register page, underscore. You might not need the name anymore. I'm not sure from uh, dash 2.15. You don't need the name for sure in single page. Uh, you might not need it. And you might still need it in multi-page. But anyway, you need to write this in every single page. Your layout, notice this. I've lost many hours forgetting about this. This is just an object. It's not app.py. All the apps that we created up until now had app.py layout well it's not here it's just an object it can be also a function but it cannot be app.layout it has to be layout and the callbacks some in many cases in in a dash documentation you can also create a callback like this at uh, app.callback right you do not want to do that in a multi-page app in a multi-page app every callback inside the pages folder has to be written like this at callback Right, so remember these three things when you're building the separate pages. You can build them like any other Dash app with multiple um, uh, tables and, and figures um, and, and whatever, drop downs. but you need to remember to include the register page, you need the layout to be an object, and you need the callback to be written like this, at callback, okay? If you remember these three things for every page and these three things for app.py, then, it's creating a, a, a dash a multi page is going to be very easy for you. Moving forward, I recommend you download. I'll share this link uh, next to the video as well. Um, download uh, Anne Marie's uh, repo dash multi page app demos. Just do copy this and just do git clone because she has a lot of good examples here on how to create multi different types of multi-pages. Basic examples with authentication, nested pages, pages that don't have any folders, uh, syncing the components between pages. You can learn a lot from, from this link. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot. It was a pleasure making this course and offering it to you. Um, don't forget to check us out on the Plotly Dash community forum uh, to ask questions, to um, to give feedback to others, to support other people as well, and and share your content, share your app creations, your figures. We want to see it all, and we'll even try to promote it on social media and on our uh, Plotly Dash uh, gallery. And I hope to see you around.